Hi there, and welcome to this series of videos, tutorials, where we show you how to use our set meshes. So we keep working with Fluent, okay? So in the link below, you will, in the description, you will find where to download this case. So we're going to do the classical case. We already did it in OpenFun to put in motion this body. So we put in motion the cylinder, but also the refinement region. So now we're going to do exactly the same, but in open phone. So we're going to see that it's very similar, but there are a few things that you need to be aware of. So let's read the case. So I won't go into details about this setup. We already know how to do it. So we have we, we, we select the general model, so remember in Fluent it's relatively easy to follow. You follow here this vertical approach, so you go from top to bottom to set up the case. So remember working in dynamic meshes, those are intrinsically transient cases, so select the transient solver. In models, just enable the models that you would like to use, materials also as well, select the materials you have influenced the database. Okay, so it's relatively easy to, to, to use. So then you have these cells, cell sums, okay? Similar to the ones that you will find in, in, in OpenFun. So here you have all the sums that you are reading. So remember here we read three different meshes. So each one will have a different uh, region, all these component meshes. So you have access to those regions there. And then you can set up here some parameters related to, 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 to those regions. So for instance, will be source there for any of these actions. So in this case, we don't set anything. So boundary conditions. So remember, it's important to set the boundary, the overset patches. So in this case, we have two overset patches, okay? So the one around this body and the one around this refinement zone. Okay, and then as soon as you enable those patches, you will set the overset interface. So as you click here, you will see that now we have three component meshes. So we select the background sounds and then the component sounds. And remember in the previous video, we, we, we study how to set pre grid priorities. So in this case, it might be a good, good idea to set up those grid priorities. So you put background sounds, grid priority zero, and then the other two, you put it in one or you put two one as you like. Okay. So as you click here, you will see the grid priorities that we have. Okay, so we put zero, one, and two, okay? Or you can put these two in one, there's no problem. And then here, this is the dictionary where we set up the dynamic mesh. So remember in OpenFund, you have that dynamic mesh dictionary. Here you have this entry you now where you set up the whole dynamic mesh. So here by default is disabled. You click here, you enable all the dynamic mesh options. So these are very similar to what you will find in OpenFront. Okay, so kind of there, the guys in OpenFront are trying to replicate. So as you know how to do mesh morphing, layer and remeshing is not available in OpenFront in the standard one, in the standard one, but you will control those options here. So in this case, for overset meshes, we don't need to do that. We know that the meshes overlap and then information is being interpolated. So you set up the actual dynamic mesh motion here, okay? So you have this list here that by default will be empty. Here already we have all the patches that move. So you could here change, edit, and you start to select the different entries, okay? So in this case, we know that we're moving back that one, back that one, one, front one, 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 the cylinder and fluid one one and fluid one one. So you select all the regions that move and then you will set it the motion. So this is rigid body select here and we set up this motion. This is the tricky part, okay, from where we're getting this motion because by default, this is the difference with open phone, where, where in open phone, you already have those motion preset. Here in uh, Fluent, you will need to program those motions, or also you have the capability to use this, but probably it's better to program this smooth function that is easy. So we get access to this because we already made a small program, okay? And I will show you that in the files that you will download, you will have access to this function, okay? So here's where you set up your kinematics. So this is a macro already defined in Fluent. Uh, you will find the in the documentation, everything, what is happening here. So here already have the documentation. So as you go, you look for that one. So that one, you will have it in 
customization manual. So see that this one will define you know, the motion of the body. Here you, you have what is happening. So you give a name, the first entry is the name of that function or that macro. The T will hold all the information for the dynamic mesh attributes. Then you will have velocity, access to velocity, access to all angular velocity, then current time and time step. So it's important that here we define velocity. And remember that in OpenFoon you define displacement. So when you program this and you would like to get the same results, you will need to get the derivative. So in OpenFoon you have sine omega omega t times time. Here we get the derivative. Okay, so it will be omega t c cos omega t time. So be careful, okay? Open phone, you use it to give displacement here, you will give uh, linear or angular velocities, and you define that here. So see what, how we program this one. So here, recall the documentation, and here you can give it the name, okay? So I will change this name. I will call it now my motion to show you, because we need to compile also this small UDF. You give here the amplitude omega t, here you initialize, okay, those vectors, the velocity and omega is everything equal to zero, and here you program, this is a 2D, you get access, you, you program just zero and one, remember in C, uh, this is for in C, and C all the counters start from zero, so it's the one here, you can also add the one from the other for the other component, set component, and there is no problem, you have it there. Okay, and this is a message, okay? Just print something in your text user's interface, okay? So it assists this, you can program. So here you have access to everything. It's very, uh, you have a lot of information that you can access, okay? So contrary to what you might think that you you, you can program and fluent, you can modify solvers, implement new models, and do crazy kinematics, okay? So just feel free to read this documentation and you will get there a good explanation and also you have some nice examples. So now that you we have that function, we need to compile it within OpenFun, uh, within Fluent. So if you're working in Linux, that is easy because in Linux you already have the C compiler. If you're working in Windows, you will need to install a C compiler. So I recommend you to install Visual Studio, it's for free, so just come to Microsoft Visual Studio website and from here download the Community Edition, okay, 2017 works great. Uh, you will find here that you have the version 2019, don't install that one, it will work, but you will need to modify some of the script that comes with uh, ANSI, so probably can be a little bit tricky. This one works out of the box. There is no need to install something, the latest one, because you only need to compile that. You need the basic C++ library. So after you install that, and you have that compiler, we can come here and load that function and compile it. So we have the case set up, okay? At this point, for instance, if you haven't compiled the function, you don't have access to that here in the dynamic mesh, okay? So let's recompile to show you. So here you have all your menu is your action. So you go to user define, see here that you will have uh, functions and compile, okay? So you can have interpreted functions or compiled function. This specific one is a compile, you need to compile. Interpreted are some functions that you can read it using the descriptive language in, in Open in, in Fluent, but here you need to compile this one. So you click here, compile, okay? Let me delete that, add, select this one, okay? So you load your, your, C, your source code, and then just click build, We'll give you a warning, okay? And then we'll do the compilation task, okay? So it's taking some time there. And see here that it's giving a problem. Okay, probably I need to unload the library that I have first. So let me unload this one, the previous one, okay? Go again, compile and build, okay? Okay, so see that it's compiled, so be careful. If you have a library that you, you load first, then unload that one, then recompile. See that one file copy everything, compile it with it, no problem, and then as you click load, you are loading the new library. Okay, so probably this will be kind of equivalent to the to the putting the lib, the, the, the lib entering your control lib to load those library. And see here that it's giving me a warning. Remember, we changed the name. So here in the dynamic mesh dictionary, 
I would need to change the image here. So see that now automatically goes to the new one. Okay. So this is my motion, the motion that you program. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Let me assign motion to each one. So as I change the name. So the name you give is you have different different macros. You will have a list here with all the macros that you implement. Okay. Okay. Let me delete delete all. Okay. So let's create again every single. Okay. So create, you give it this one. So you assign that one, then back one, one, create. Okay, here you see that is the certain gravity is starting from this one because I already run something. So this is important that also you, 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 I, will show, I will show you how to do, to test the function. So it will be kind of equivalent to the move dynamic measure in open from here. You can test it as well. So it's a good idea to self, to save, uh, back out the original file and then you test in the, in the in the other one to see the motion and then if you are satisfied you can get back to the original one because you are modifying your mesh so be careful with that in this case I, I don't care okay so now we select the fluid one one okay with that motion one 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 with that motion then I have the front patch so here from one one here and then remember this cylinder is also moving so somewhere here you will select the cylinder uh there is no need to select the overset patches because they are already attached to the regions but this one you can put then nothing will happen okay uh nothing bad will happen it will it will work okay so now that you assign all those motions you have your list here and then you can do to send okay so First, you can display the sun motion. Okay, this is just the body how it's moving. Okay, so here you select and you give a time step preview and you see your motion. Okay, so here you are not modifying the mesh, just previewing the, the, the patches that you select. So here we are not recomputing the all the interpolation information of the overset solver. Now, if we go here. Preview mesh motion. Here we are going to modify the mesh. Here we are going to recompute all the interpolation, all that information. Okay, so here we can check in the previous one you check that the motion is the one you, you want. Okay, but if you want to go that step forward to check is that the overset interpolation, everything is done okay, that you don't have all, all orphan cells, you can here. Okay. So something important that also you will need to set up. Okay, you will need to initialize to enable all the interpolation, but also you will need to set up here a contour, okay, to visualize the mesh. So you select the plans that you want to see, you go draw mesh, okay, select, you can select what you want to see, okay. So we want to see this one, you want to enable the overset, so to show you the cutting hole and everything. So don't forget this step because otherwise you won't see the, the, the body, okay? It doesn't work if you enable that in the mesh. You need to, con to create your contour maps to, to visualize the results. And then we go back here, preview mesh motion, okay? And then give a time step and then preview and then you see your motion, okay? So here actually we are modifying the mesh, okay? So be careful. We are recomputing all the interpolation and everything. Okay, so if you sh you do a mesh preview and then you want to start your solution, you cannot start from this and you already modify. So remember, save a, an original file. So if I go back here in contours, I can use this and I can visualize my overset, how it's been computing if I don't have any uh, orphan cells and all that stuff. So you can just visualize all your motion. As you see, it's relatively easy. Probably you will say that, okay, it's more straightforward and open for, for pretty much you will get used to this. There is no big deal. So you put 20 here and it will do the 20 time steps. Okay. And I want to stress this one. Remember here you are modifying the mesh. So as you go and you start your computation, you are starting from here. So it's a good idea that you save a case 
Okay, so it's that I have the in case, the one that I have my original mesh or modify, and then the final, the one that I'm testing. So it's, you run the final, you're satisfied from everything, then go back to init where you have the unmodified uh, geometry. Be careful. That is the only cave that I need to give you because sometimes many people make their mistakes. Okay, so that is as easy as that. I won't run this case. Uh, it is a little bit time consuming, but just to tell you about timing, it's faster than OpenFront, but it's not faster because it is fluent, it's faster because here you, 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 you can get larger time steps, less, uh, less correction, and also one thing that here, it could be even much faster in fluent, but one thing that you are using this couple solver, couple solvers are very robust, very stable, but they're time consuming, use some resources. Okay, but the computing time is about the same. Okay, so this is the case setup, nothing to do. Okay, after you have everything, so remember to run the case, exactly the same setup. Methods, uh, your own realization factors, everything is initialized and then run, okay? When you are running, choose a timestamp, number of timestamps, and voila, you are ready to go. Something really neat in Fluent that is just implementing the latest version because previously, previously you needed to program, but finally they program like the adaptive time step at that time stepping that you have in open phone. So here you have this CFL base approach. So basically what you do is you just give a minimum and maximum CFL factor and then Fluent will adapt your time step to, to, to obey those constraints that you're given. So this is really neat. Newly implemented in 2019, previously you needed to program. So you need to learn how to do it, but it's not a big deal. So that is, all it's to, to set up this case, so I want to show you the solution. So here I have a pre-computed pre solution, okay? So this is what we're doing basically, okay? So the domains are moving. We can plot the mesh there, okay? So you have a very nice interpolation. So the you see that the refinement level between levels is not too much, so you are not smearing your solution. And we can plot also here, for instance, cell type. Uh, 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 we have it here. I don't want to see that. I want to see the constant. Okay. And we can also visualize here how the cell types are changing while the body is moving. Okay. So remember here, as in part of you here, now where you're saying side that comes with open from beautiful software, amazing, I love it. So remember, but as as you do with part of you, you need just to move, move those patches, otherwise they will over, overlap and it's quite difficult to see things. Okay, so now let's visualize the solution here. So we have axis velocity magnet here. Okay, so see here that from this one to this one, you can see that between interfaces, there is some mirror of the solution. Okay, so that can be controlled by having a better uh, a better uh, expansion ratio between one component grid to the other one, but it's not a problem for this case. If you compare with uh, OpenFund solution, it's very similar solution. Later, I will show you some quantitative results about that, but let me put this one, okay? So play, and this is what we have, okay? So here we have velocity incoming here, Okay, then if I would recall all, all everything is up and, and this is oscillating with a rather high frequency, I think it's two hertz or one hertz, I don't recall. Yeah, one hertz. Okay, and this is our solution. So see, nice interpolation from one compu component grid to the other one. And let's visualize now vorticity. So this one, here we can see better the interpolation between component grids. So see that the vortices have passed from one to the other level, okay? So in this case, we are running using the no minimization. So see that we have equivalent to the one that we have in OpenFund, but you can run also using the minimization approach. You will get very similar results. It will be actually a little bit more faster solution because you are just erasing from the domain a lot of cells, but pretty much the approach is the same, okay? So what I want to show you now, it is some quantitative results that I already have here. So let me show you. First, let's take a look at drag force. So here we have 
four cases different story. Let me hide this one. So two base case. So we have open phone and then we have uh, Fluent and open phone. And see that the solutions are very similar, even though that here you see that there are large differences. It's kind of the transient related to the uh, interpolation, but if you compute here the mean values, you will get very similar, similar values. And we compare different solutions, okay? And then we check leaf, okay? And in leaf, since are much better than the previous one, but even with the previous one, I'm quite satisfied. So I hide this to there, I don't need. So see that we see that we have very similar shading frequencies, very similar amplitude for all the cases, okay? And we'll check the other two, okay? So if I would recall that is something, I think it's minimization and non-minimization and open phone, different uh, time discretization schemes. So we have Euler and the other is about uh, Craig Nicholson. But as you see, not much difference, a very good agreement between the results. Okay, so I think this is all. So remember in the description, the link, you will have this case ready to go. You will have the simples, the, the C files, everything. So feel free to play around with this one, compare with OpenFun. And at this point, we explore, in this case, how to do 2D moving bodies. So the next tutorials, we're going to move to 3D cases. So the things, since it doesn't change, they're exactly the same, but it's now 3D, but we're going to work with 3D body motion. Okay, so now it's prescribed motion here in Fluent, but also in Open. Phone. So now we're going to see how to set up things with 3D body motion and Open from Fluent and compare solu solu uh, solutions. Hopefully we're, we're going to get the same results. And that will be, everything for our set measures. So after this, I hope you will become, let's say, not an expert, but you will have a very good knowledge. And probably a last video, I will show you a few tips and tricks and standard practice when doing this kind of, using this approach for our set measures. So I hope you enjoyed this one and see you in the next, the next time. Bye.